Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Pokemon. I'm Pablo, and for this episode, I'm going to talk about a question I've had, like, kind of over the years. Something I've kind of wondered about. You know, like, in my past videos, I've... I guess I kind of talked about stuff that I kind of wondered about the Pokemon series. You know, the franchise, and how some things are kind of weird and unexplained. You know, like how some people believe that Pokemon have a conscience, and, like, well, that they always know what's good. Or how do you mention death or like some inappropriate stuff? And that's the kind of stuff I'm going to talk about in this video. So what I'm going to talk about is how it is about Ash and Pikachu from the anime. Like, was their friendship meant to be? You know, was it fate? Was it destiny? Or was it planned by an outside group or of some sort? So... And uh, now I'm actually going to explain this in storyboard form. And if you don't know what a storyboard is, it's kind of like what an animator draws. It's kind of like a comic strip. You know, like that animators draw to explain an episode. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain why I think that. Like, why I believe that. And this table's wobbling. <laughs> but I'm going to explain why I think that so that maybe you understand or maybe, like, I'll get you wondering. me. And who knows, maybe I've made a new Pokemon theory or, like, Conspiracy going on here. Yeah, those are those kinds of things are always fun. Makes the series a little bit more mature. So let's get started. Cue the flashback or ripple or transition that I usually do in these videos. Let's do it. Okay, so this question or thing I've been wondering, it all started when I saw this Johto episode in which Ash and Gary are talking. It was like the general episode in which they were going to face each other in the, the Johto League or the Silver Conference. I don't know why they're holding hands. I think he was giving Ash the other half of that Pokeball if you've seen the episode. Anyway, they're talking and Gary's wondering how things would have been. You know, He's kind of wondering if he and Pikachu were meeting with a fate or could that just happen to anyone. You know, how he got Squirtle and like what would have happened if Ash... You know, got some other starter Pokemon. So yeah, that's got me wondering. So let's start from so let's start from the beginning. And by beginning, I mean way back to the first episode to explain this whole Ash and Pikachu thing. See, storyboard. Moving on. Okay. So basically, in the episode, Ash has stayed up past his bedtime because he's too excited for his old journey to pick a starter and everything. So the odds of you staying up late due to excitement for something you're going to do in the future, the odds of that, okay, yeah, yeah, the odds of that you of you doing that. Come on, I'm pretty sure we've all like stayed up and been excited for something. So yeah, it's, due to that, Ash is late, and so basically he's just bursting out the door, hopefully that there's a starter Pokemon waiting for him. Waiting for him. I'm sorry if I'm like stuttering. So yeah, the odds of that. Okay, yeah, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone's done that. I'm pretty sure everyone's been late for something. And they've just bolted out the door wearing their pajamas. Or at least not get, or at least forget to comb their hair or brush their teeth. One of those things, something like that. I remember being, almost being late for school. And so I ran without combing my hair. No one noticed though, so yeah. Next. Okay, now this is the part where things get a little weird. Well, not weird, but like the odds of that happening are not, are like probably not gonna happen. So Ash finally makes it, and what do you know? There's Professor Oak telling him that he has no more starter Pokemon for him, that he's ran out of Squirtles, Bulbasaur, and Charmanders. So basically, Professor Oak, in which one of his jobs, is to like is basically to give each ten year old that wants to start their journey the option to choose three different Pokemon in which he has run out of all three. Even though like they give him a calling supposed to be prepared for every child that's going to come. So like, get yeah, what? Like are you telling me that this is one of your jobs and you didn't even do it? Would you just forget about Ash? 
Oh, but coincidentally, he does have a Pikachu, in which he'll be like, I do have one other Pokemon, but it's not really a starter, you know? And it has an electrifying personality, I guess, in which Ash takes it, because what else has he got? So, yeah, and then, you know, the whole, it shocks him, you know, getting chased by Spearow, he even trying, Ash trying to save Pikachu, but Pikachu returns the favor and try it. Save him from all with a powerful thundershock, yada yada yada, and that's how they like become friends. And then over the years, they enter more trouble, and then yada, their bond is closer. So, yeah. But was this all really fate, or you know, could things have gone? Or is it possible that things could have gone another way? Seriously, let's think about this. I, I said think, not make a face look like you're constipated and try to make it take a dump. Well, anyway, yeah, let's, let's just say this is a Pikachu's thinking face. You know, they're really concentrating on this. You know, have you ever wondered, was this really planned? You know, was Ash really supposed to be, like, was Ash and Pikachu really fate? Was it really an outside force from the universe, tr like some unknown outside force from the universe? bring them together because they are meant to be together as partners, as Pokemon and a person, you know? Was this truly meant to be? Or just pure coincidence? Now you're probably wondering, well, okay, well, besides the odds, what else makes you think that? Well, what makes me think that is, think about it. Professor Oak, you know? He's the one that gives the Pokemon people. You know, like, that's his job. And he has met Ash in the past. See? In this picture. Professor Oak knows Ash's mom, Delia Ketchum. And so, yeah, in my, in my last video I was talking about how Professor Oak, Oak is one of the suspects to be Ash's father. You know, that question people have been wondering for a while. But yeah, as you can see in this picture, Professor Oak has known Ash since he was a kid. And because Ash's neighbor, Gary, is also his rival, so there's always been competition between them. I guess when they were kids, probably, it's most likely. And, you know, Gary's parents have never been introduced. People say he's an orphan, so, you know, his only family is his grandpa, so... Yeah, that kind of stuff. So you're probably saying... Now, right now you're probably saying, oh, yeah, so... Oak knows Ash when he was like, what, five, seven, six? Well, like, what made him go, oh, I'm gonna give this kid a Pikachu instead of a starter? Well, I'm getting there, people, I'm getting there. Just pointing out that Oak has known Ash for a while, like in the past, in more ways than one. Dun dun dun. And by that, storyboard, I'm referring to the fourth movie. I think it's the fourth movie. It could just be the four making me think it's the fourth movie. You know, Pokemon 4 ever, you know, celebrate the voice of the forest, that kind of thing. What's with this white line? Oh, weird. So anyway, yeah, basically Pokemon Forever in the fourth movie, I'm assuming. You know, Ash, you know, runs into this kid from the past because they'll be wrong to the future or their present. Well, actually, for us, it's past, because that movie's old now, so, yeah. You know, as you can see here, he's with this with this kid right there, in which his name is Sam, or Samuel, which is Professor Oak, basically. That's basically Professor Oak. That's him when he was 10 years old. He went back and, like, he went to the future for 50 years, making him, like, what, 60, right? What is he, like, 60 or something? 50? 40? Well, I'm pretty sure he's 60. Who knows? So anyway, Ash has met met Samuel Oak when he was a kid. In which, you know, he's met Pikachu and he's met Misty and he's met Brock. Now, he hasn't seen all of Ash's Pokemon. He's only seen Pikachu and Bayleaf. So it's possible that, you know, you know, he did draw that sketch of Pikachu and Celebi in the movie. It's possible that he remembered what Pikachu looked like, remembered his personality and everything, and, you know, he found that 
like Pikachu and like years later when he had to give starters to the kids he'd be like oh yeah like I remember Ash had a Pikachu I wonder if that was his starter or something like that he he's always hanging around with him maybe that's his starter you know I just assumed that maybe Ash told him oh this is my starter Pikachu you know since he was always introducing him and Pikachu so it's possible that you know with the drawing as a picture reference he found the right Pikachu and then like gave it to At and then when it was time for Ash to start his journey, you know, now Professor Oak as a full grown adult, elder, you know, he gave him the Pikachu, in which he was able to recognize from the drawing he made when he was ten when he went to the future. A lot of that just sounded confusing to me. <laughs> but you get the idea. Professor Oak goes back in time by accident, meets Ash with his Pikachu, goes back to his original time, grows up finds that Pikachu and gives it to Ash when he starts his journey. <laughs> Maybe that's how it happened. You know? Maybe that's how it happened, people. So that's basically all my evidence. So yeah, I'm gonna get back to so, you guys. So basically, I've always been wondering that if Ash and Pikachu were actually plans to be together because of that whole movie. There's also some other stuff that I, have, that I also have some other theories like based on that movie. You know, I've actually had some other theories based on the movie because there are a lot of unanswered questions in the Pokemon universe. In which I'll probably make more of those videos in case anyone's interested. But yeah, basically, are Ash and Pikachu, was it destiny or fate that we're on together? Or was it a time traveling Celebi that made a the Professor Oak think of getting oh okay now it just sounds ridiculous. <laughs> um okay so or was it a time traveling Celebi bringing a young Professor Oak to the future, making him realize that Ash and Pikachu are made to be together, bringing him back and then back to his own time, which when he grows up finds that Pikachu and then gives it to Ash when he starts his journey and then later I guess the cycle. Man, time traveling's confusing. <laughs> But you kind of get the idea, like, was it really fate that brought all of them together, or was it planned? Now, that was, now, when I was a kid, I was wondering that. Now, technically, this is a cartoon, not an actual, like, real-life story. So, you know, I, I've heard that the animators of Pokemon were thinking about partnering Ash with Clefairy. But, you know, they decided to go with a Pikachu because it was more gender neutral. You know, it was cute enough for girls to like it, yet cool enough for, like, for boys to like it. So, you know, kind of works both ways, I guess. You know, gender neutral. That way, because the point of, like, of a product is for everyone to like it. You know, you could focus on one thing, but you will get more money if, you get everyone else to like it instead of just that one group. You know, that's why nowadays you have a boy and girl option in the game. Not in the past when you could just play boy. Probably making girls feel like left out unless they would just play it like that. So, yeah. You know, which is kind of strange because uh, the creator of Pokemon, he didn't, like, Pikachu's not really his favorite. His favorite's Poliwag, which I also found weird. So, kind of weird how Ash wasn't partnered up with a Poliwag, or a Clefairy, or a Charmander, or a Squirtle, or a Bulbasaur. He originally wanted a Squirtle, which, looking back at it, I kind of found messed up. Like, he was like, oh, I want a Squirtle. Oh, yeah, we ran out. Okay, I'll just take a Bulbasaur. Yeah, we ran out too. Oh, well, I'll take a Charmander. Yeah, we ran out of that too. Okay, fine, I'll take this Pikachu. <laughs> Like, when, when I look back at that, I wonder, eh, maybe that wasn't the kind of story they should have gotten out with. Then again, Ash was excited and didn't really much care about the Pokemon. He just wanted to, like, have a friend and, you know, like, have the journey and everything. So, yeah. Thanks for watching my video. You know, click like and subscribe if you liked it. You know, put some comments in there of your opinions or, like, if you're interested in other theories that I have based on my years and experience of watching the series like I'm very loyal to television like I will continue watching a show until it's cancelled
Seriously. Or unless it, like, really went down the crapper. <laughs> like, it really just whew, lost it. So, yeah, me. Or, like, seriously, I'm, I'm, that loyal to, I'm that loyal to a TV show. Or, like, if it's that bad, like, if they have, like, a, like a special or something like that, I'll probably just watch it and catch up. Like, that, that's how I am with television. That's why, like, I still watch Pokemon, just because I'm curious to find out what happens to Ash and Pikachu. And also to find out how to actually pronounce Pokemon's names. It actually pays to, like, figure out what, what their name is. Because you don't want to look like a fool being all, like, you know, you don't want to look like a fool when you talk about their names of the Pokemon. Did it just get dark around here? Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> but yeah, like, you don't want to look like a fool when you, like, say one Pokemon's name and someone's like, Oh, no, it's like, no, you don't pronounce it like that. You pronounce it like this dumbass, you know, something like that. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. And don't forget to catch them all.